Hisense's new 100-inch dual-color laser TV, the Aura Ring Sleep and Activity Tracker, and Vizio's first Dolby Atmos home theater sound system. Live from the Twit Studios in Petaluma, California, it's the new screensavers. <laughs> Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. The new Screensavers is brought to you by Hover. Register a domain name with Hover and build your online brand today. Go to hover.com slash twit and save 10% off your first purchase. Thank you to Luke. By the way, I just want to tell you, Ole Miss beat Southern Illinois. What, 76 to 41? <laughs> is that even possible? That's a crazy I, good offense. I've, I've never heard. That is a crazy good offense. Not much of a defense, but a crazy good offense. <laughs> hey, welcome to the 76 to 41. Oh, man. Oh, man. Welcome to the new screensavers. I'm Leo Laporte. I'm Scott Wilkinson. Look at that. Hey. The, uh, the home theater geeks here. So nice happy to, to be you, back Scott. in the Twit studio. Yeah, well, and I'll tell you why he's here in just a second. This is episode 177. It's October 6th, 2018. We've got a really fun show planned for you. Lots of fun stuff to take a look at. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe you've noticed. I know some of you sharp-eyed people have noticed that for the last, I think, two, three months, I've been wearing this black ring lovely by the way a fine is, fashion yeah, statement it's titanium it's light it's comfortable it's also an activity and sleep tracker the best i've ever used called aura you may not have heard of this one but we're going to interview the founder and ceo of aura hapreet singh rai in just a second he is he is an expert in some of the things this ring measures and he says by the way i'm i'm an amazing specimen <laughs> so <laughs> <laughs> so stay tuned yeah. for that. That's going to be a lot of fun. Yeah, we're also going to be taking a look at the new Hisense dual oh, color laser man. TV. The crabs are back, baby. <laughs> I am so excited. This We've had the uh, single laser for a while. Remember Robert Heron helped us uh, review that a yep. few months ago. Yep. Hisense has replaced it with the dual laser. Dual laser. So it's got a red laser and a blue laser in it. And we're going to talk about how that improves things and what the overall picture looks like, it's pretty impressive. They wanted you to review this in your home. Yes. But you couldn't fit it. I couldn't quite fit a 100-inch screen in my so home. So they said, they said, well, Scott, <laughs> uh, well, Leo, what if we installed it in your studio, because you have obviously plenty of Plenty room, of wall space. And flew Scott up to review it there. So Hisense flew you up, and we're going to take advantage of it and have you on the show. Yeah. And I'm very curious what you think of this, because I like the old one. Um, the old one was good. And, well, I'm not going to say anything we'll, yet. We'll get into I'm it. I'm not going to say anything yet. Stay mm -hmm. tuned for our review. Sam Mashkovich, Mashkovich, you know, he's doing uh, now the Know How Show with Jason mm -hmm. on gaming. He's going to show you from Mars Technica. He's going to show us how to <coughs> overclock. Yes, people are still overclocking. How to overclock your gaming rig. Mm. And That's... we have a sound system, too, right? Yeah, we got the new uh, Vizio soundbar system. Not only a sound bar, but a subwoofer and actual uh, surround speakers, in addition to having Dolby Atmos, which brings sound from overhead. In this case, by actually shooting sound upward, bounce it off the ceiling, bring it down. That's to crazy. It <laughs> is a bit crazy, but surprising how well it works. Unfortunately, we have 30-foot ceilings. Well, it doesn't work so well proof. in this room. No, <laughs> but we'll take a look. Actually, you've been recommending Vizio soundbars for some time. For quite it's, some time. It's, it, uh, on the radio show, I like the number one question, what soundbar mm -hmm. should I get? So, and for, for the money, it's it's the way to go, no we'll, question. We'll take a look. Mm -hmm. uh, also, of course, as always, fewer questions in the mailbag. First, though, the big stories. And there is a story brewing this week. It broke on Thursday that... I don't know what to think of. It started uh, with a story in Bloomberg Business Week on Thursday. Now, Bloomberg Business Week, very reliable. Yeah. Very credible. They had sources in the uh, uh, U.S. intelligence agencies, Amazon, Apple, and other companies that told them that there was a secret microchip 
the size of a, a, a grain of rice. What? Put on super micro motherboards uh, by, uh, they think, by the Chinese military during the manufacture of these motherboards in China. Well, that would certainly make it possible. The grain of rice, this little tiny thing, appeared to be simply a support chip, something com commonplace on a motherboard. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But in fact, when the motherboard was booted in a server, it would modify the operating system of the server. This is all, and I want to say this many times, according to Business Week. Right. And I'll tell you why I'm saying that again and again. According to, there it is, that's the, if you're watching the video, it fits, I mean, it's tiny. It's tiny. It's tiny. It would modify the operating system, phone home, and transmit data from the server to the Chinese government, the Chinese military. Obviously, uh, a, a governmental attempt to, to do industrial espionage. Exactly. Right? Mm -hmm. Now, the, this, this started, according to Bloomberg Businessweek, you'll see why I'm saying this again and again. This started when Amazon was doing its due diligence. They were about to buy a company called Elemental. We mm -hmm. use Elementals. We bought Elementals when they were just Elemental, and we just bought a new one from Amazon because it did buy Elemental. They were looking at it, and, and according to sources inside Amazon that told this to Bloomberg Businessweek, found this chip. Well, they took one apart and they just happened they to said, find what this, is this? Teeny they do thing? it it's tr it's normal completely normal to do a security audit before you buy a company among sure. other among other other things that you would do before you buy a company sure. and they were looking at the hardware the elemental box we use are very expensive 25 30000 dollars they transmit when well, you're watching it right now they stream uh, our content to our endpoints youtube mixer twitch you stream so the elemental is an encoding box it's basically a pc it's got a super micro mini uh, super micro motherboard there's our elemental right there uh you pay a lot for that beautiful front face <laughs> you see it says aws on it that's because right. this is the version that amazon, amazon web sells. services yeah now I, I, <laughs> amazon said no customers aka me mm -hmm. were impacted by this if it even existed because uh, the Amazon Elemental doesn't actually have a use an interface to the public internet, which is wrong. Yeah, it does. I mean, it's it couldn't streaming stream. Out. Yeah, if it didn't. But really? okay, setting that aside. So Bloomberg published this story. Fascinating story. Looked like it was very well researched and importantly very well sourced. But all the sources were anonymous. Mm. The very next day, big denials. Amazon says never happened. Never happened. What? Apple says, not only did Apple say it's unsubstantiated and untrue, but it says we are not under a gag order. Because the theory is, well, maybe they're denying it because the government, the U.S. government said, well, don't tell anybody. Yeah, right. We are not under a gag order, Apple said. Now, it's not typical for Apple to lie. No. <laughs> uh, but these were emphatic denials. In fact, Amazon said there's so many inaccuracies in this article that they're hard to count. <laughs> we never found modified hardware or malicious chips and servers in any of our data centers. The elemental alone is used by the Department of Defense, the Mormon Church, us. <laughs> it's very widely used. Yeah. It's the most popular streaming server out there. Yeah. So some real cause for concern, but I don't know who to believe. Uh, Zach Rudiker writing in TechCrunch, who Zach's been reporting on security issues for decades. Yeah. Uh, he most recently for CBS, he says, I don't know what's true. It is not obvious. Oh, Bloomberg man. Business Week is highly reliable. They had many sources from different places all telling the same story. That, to me, makes it credible mm -hmm. because, uh, what, are they all making up this rice? Unless yeah. Bloomberg Business Week is lying, which I don't think is true. Right. Or organized all these people to say, here's the story we got to tell. Kind of hard to believe. I, I agree. You know, it's interesting. It's kind of a microcosm of what happened in the Senate yes. this week. <laughs> yes. It's a, it's a he Who said, he said story <laughs> in this case. So I don't know what to tell you. Um, uh, I guess we should probably, do we, do we have the old elemental? We sent it back because mm. that would be if we if it were true the old elemental that we got from elemental with a super micro motherboard we could look and see if that chip is there uh, i don't know how you're going to verify this both sides are emphatic bloomberg said we stand by our story we stand by our reporting mm. weirdest thing i have i mean i've been doing this for 40 years mm -hmm. the weirdest thing i've ever encountered this is such a detailed story with so many sources I find it very hard to believe it's not true. And yet every single player in this, including the Chinese government, by the way, <laughs> they course. denied it as well. Of course. Well, so you'd it, expect that. So it didn't happen. 
you know, it, it, I don't know. But my gut says Bloomberg's telling the truth. Mm -hmm. They don't lie. They've got the research. They've got the sources. I think, frankly, that these other companies are lying. Maybe because they're under government order or government restraint. Maybe, you know, somebody called them up and said, look, the worst thing you could do is to, to admit this. To verify this. But in that case, yeah. they would say nothing. Yeah. I'd say we have no comment. saying nothing would be kind of an admission. Mm, yeah, yeah. That's very odd. This is very odd, yes. Microsoft had a Surface event this week. They announced five, count them, <laughs> five things. Yeah. Uh, three computers, a Surface laptop, by the way, beautiful matte black. Mm. Per, by, notice that for the TV review, by the way, I'm wearing a 30% gray shirt. <laughs> I, just, I just wanted you to know. That's I'm very good. I should, have been, I should have been wearing my reviewer black Yeah, what well. are you? You're wearing I'm green. I'm wearing green. Khaki. Right Come right on. Now. You can't review a TV in khaki. <laughs> uh, Gomer. Uh, <laughs> didn't they say that in the show? I think that's from the show. Golly! Um, Go <laughs> they announced a, a replacement, and I'm depressed about this, uh, for uh, the um, Surface Studio. Mm. Yeah, sorry, Alex. Alex also wanted to show the Surface, Bo Surface Pro 6, right? Which is weird, because last year, there's the Surface Pro 6. They announced the Surface Pro with no number, which would have been the fifth. So they <laughs> just say cyber it's like, what? Numbers. What? And the Surface Studio 2, 3500 bucks starting price. I'm not going to buy another one, but I do love for what we do, the Surface Studio. Um, weirdly, they announced headphones, Surface headphones. Uh, and actually, I'm gonna, I think you, we need to get you a pair, Scott, so you can tell us what you think. Yeah. These are uh, noise canceling. They have many levels of noise canceling. Uh -huh. Unlike the Bose, it's not an on off switch, it's a dial that you can turn oh, the noise canceling wow. up and down. That's cool. $350. That's yeah, uh, in the Bose territory. Yeah, I don't know why they're in this business, but it's a very profitable business. <coughs> Weirdly, the, none of the Surfaces, uh, the Surface Portables, the Surface Laptop, or the Surface Pro have a Type-C port, but mm. the headphones do. So, there you go. For charging. <laughs> yeah. I have to admit, I was a little disappointed. Uh, uh, Therat was a little, Paul Therat was a little disappointed because modern computers these days have Type-C ports. Even this old Lenovo has a Type-C port, but not on the Surface. Mm. The Surface Studio does have a Type-C port, though. So let's see. That's four. Oh, and the and the fifth one, they sh well, they announced that they were going to push out eighteen oh nine, the new version of oh, Windows yeah, Tuesday. Is, yeah. Uh, very exciting. The the fall update for Windows ten, uh, but well, never mind, because people said, and I was I've installed it on all my machines. You have to go out and seek it at least for the first week. You have to actually actively say I want to update. But I didn't have a problem, but a number of people reported that it deleted all the files or many of the files in their documents folder. What? what? Oh, my God. One guy on the uh, Microsoft board said, 220 gigabytes, gone, because I updated 1809. So uh, Microsoft has pulled that back and said, we're going to check no, that. Let's wait on that. Check that. That wasn't the announcement five. Announcement five, was it the Android? That was a weird thing, too. Microsoft's decided that they want Android phones to be the phone of choice for Windows users. They're going to do app mirroring, but it's not here yet from Android phones on Windows 10 devices. Oh, and Surface All Access, where you pay a monthly fee uh, with no finance charge, and you can buy any one of those Surfaces. If it's a Surface Go, 25 bucks a month, all the way up to 150 bucks a month for a Surface Studio. So that was the Microsoft event. We, uh, we did not stream it because they didn't stream it, uh, but we did cover it on Windows Weekly if you want to know more. Finally, here's some good news. When Wi-Fi started, it was 802.11b. Mm -hmm. Then, weirdly, they went to 802.11a. A, yeah. <laughs> then they went to 802.11g, then right. n. Right. Now they're at ac. Right. And the Wi-Fi alliance has realized this might be confusing to consumers. <laughs> you think? Well, I don't know why they think that's what? confusing. So it's now Wi-Fi 4, 5, 6. Wi-Fi 6, which will be 802.11ax coming out next year. Wi-Fi 5, 802.11ac. Wi-Fi 4, 802.11n. Just so you know, <laughs> Wi-Fi wi 4, 5, and 6. Oh, man. It's the Sesame Street version of Wi-Fi. <laughs> 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Uh, that's the news of the week. We're going to talk to uh, the CEO and founder of Aura, the makers of these rings. I think you're, we're going to want to I, get you. I want to check this out. I'm very you know, interested. Sleep is a big deal. One of the things sleep scientists know is that there is a connection between aging, poor sleep, and Alzheimer's. Mm. Because one of the things sleep does is clean the brain 
out of uh, all those free radicals floating around. <laughs> you don't want any radicals in your brain. Mm -mm. And that's that buildup is what actually causes Alzheimer's. So they're a little concerned there's a connection. Anyway, that has nothing to do with the ring. We're going no. to talk about the ring that tracks your sleep and activity levels in just a bit. But first, a word from our sponsor, Hover. Dot com. Do you own any domain names? I do, and they are with Hover. Of course they are, because you're smart. <laughs> and man, their customer service is Isn't so it? great. It's so oh, good. Oh man, I call them up if I have a problem, they're just right there, they've solved the problem. Steve Gibson um, was on one of those old registrars, like I think it was Network Solutions, because he'd registered all his domain names mm -hmm. years ago, and he said, I have had it with them. And he went on Twitter, this was last year, and said, who's the best? And Twitter pretty much said Hover. He's he's now all on Hover. Mm -hmm. Hover is a domain ra name registrar that does it right. First of all, uh, they don't do the upsell. They, right. It's a simple price. You get who has privacy as part of that price, mm -hmm. and you don't have 50 pages of check boxes after yes. you register. Yes. Do you, but don't you want this? Don't you want serving? Don't you want this? Because they don't sell website serving. They don't do any of that. That's it's right. a domain registrar. Right. you got to, if you, you know, I think every individual should have a domain name that's their personal domain domain name. I have leolaporte.com. I've got scottwilkinson.com. I think that's really important. When my kids were born, one of the first things I did is I bought them their domain names. Yeah. And I bought them for 20 years thinking, well, if they don't use them by then. <laughs> <laughs> and actually both are, which is great. Really? I feel oh, really good great. about that. That's great. So it's good. And it may not be your full name or your personal name. Just the other day, Lisa said, you know, we should have a family a Laporte's domain name. So I registered that at hover.com. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. um, I have, I hate to even think, 40 or 50 domain <laughs> names. I love hover.com, but it's affordable, it's easy, and domain names are the best way to brand yourself on the web. Mm -hmm. It is very important. And it also says something about you. You know, it's not just .com, .net, .gov, .org anymore. Right. You can get, uh, are you a designer? Get .design. That's right. Are you a pizza maker? Get .pizza. <laughs> Scott.pizza. Gomerpile. <laughs> what is what is let's see what gomerpile.online.club.design.xyz.net.org boy there's a lot of you know what if gomer was with us today he'd have no end of choices <laughs> and they are great this is the great time to get that dot design name they're on sale at hover for the entire month of october forget this five dollars ninety nine cents wow. five ninety nine that's 85% off for your first year, half the price of a dot-com. That is a great deal. Mm -hmm. Per year! Per year! Website and hosting needs change, so keeping your domain separate from the host, really important. I tell everybody this. It's tempting. You say, well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to set up a website somewhere. I'm going to buy the domain name from them. But yeah, right. but, but, but you may be moving. You don't want to be locked in. That's have right. a separate registrar. Have a great registrar. Best in class, as you said, customer support. Zero upsells, as I said. The Hover Connect feature on the page makes it so easy to connect your domain name to the website builder. So there's no reason uh, to buy it through the website builder when it's this easy. And I love the flexibility. Uh, the DNS management tool there is so great, so easy to use. You can even get personalized email that matches your domain. I, that's what I. That's what I have. That's the main reason to get it. You don't even have to. If you don't have a website, you don't need to get the. See, look at all the connections there. Mm -hmm. Hover I, has over 400 domain extensions to choose from. All the fun ones, all the clever ones, and of course, all the main ones. Look, there's Mark Fraunfelder. He uses Hover. I use Hover. Scott Gibson uses Hover. Scott Wilkinson. Scott Gibson. Steve Gibson <laughs> and Scott Wilkinson. I've got conflated you yes, two. Yes, indeed. Hover.com and don't forget the month of October. Dot Design is on sale for $5.99. New customers can get an additional 10% off off your first purchase. Just go to hover.com slash twit. That's right. Well, that makes it even more affordable. Hover.com slash twit. All right, we're coming on over here. For some reason, this table is piled high with rings. <laughs> with rings. <laughs> it must be our aura ring man is here. This Scott was very interested in this. Uh, Hapreet is the founder and CEO of O U R A. I have to spell it right. Yeah. Uh, Hapreet Hapreet Singh Rai, O U R A. Aura. And there's a Aura. line over the O say it's ca it's a long vowel. It is a long vowel. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm. By the way, I'm just the CEO. We have three co-founders. Three co-founders. Yeah, much smarter people than me. <laughs> All right. What's your background? Um, I studied electrical engineering at uh, University of Michigan. Um, I studied MEMS, so I got really into sort of sensor design. Oh, the micro electromechanical machines. Mm -hmm. Yeah, these are these are not quite nano, but very very tiny. 
and they're in use in a lot of different ways. So this exactly. what's in here is MEMS? Yeah, I mean, we- It's got MEMS inside. Ex Ooh. Accelerometers are based off MEMS technology, you know, piezoelectric resistors. Um, but yeah, and then we have a bunch of optical components in there as well. There's a lot of design in this too. This is titanium, so it's light. <laughs> exactly. And uh, strong. And yep. strong and tough. Uh, so Waterproof too. Do you have any yeah. experience in sleep science? Um, I do not. Actually, what drew me into this was my lack of sleep. <laughs> <laughs> You know so, what? That That's what drew me into it too. Yeah. Um, I want to sleep better. Who totally. doesn't? Yeah. It's something like I think um, our society now gets an hour less sleep on average than 40 years ago. Um, really? Yeah, which has a ton of profound health impacts. No kidding. Yeah. yeah. Hey, um, John, could you get me my phone? I left it over there. I want to show people the app. So you wear this ring, and you can wear it all the time. I, uh, I actually wore this on vacation. I wore it in the shower, in the pool. I wore it in the ocean. I wore it in the hot tub. It's waterproof. Yep. Uh, and, and most importantly, you want to wear it at night, right? Because this is going to monitor your sleep, but it monitors more than just, what does it monitor? What are, what, what are the monitors? How many monitors are in <laughs> this thing? So, Yeah, you got it up right there. So we have two um, infrared LEDs, uh, a detector in the middle. Oh, uh, so we can't see it, but that's sending infrared light right now. Correct, at 250 hertz, 250 times a second. And the thing in the middle, the little dot in the middle, that's picking up the light. So it's that's correct. Is it bouncing off of something? Yep, your your skin, actually, your arteries that run up and down the finger. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. Then we have three temperature sensors in there. Um, we use temperature as well. I know which we talked about a bit, and then an accelerometer and a gyro, as well. So it it's an activity tracker. It knows that I'm walking and moving. Yep. That's the most basic feature of any. That's what the accelerometer is used for. Yeah, exactly. And also when you're in bed, you know, trying to get sleep detection. Helps for letting us know if you're laying down or not. Oh yeah, mm. one of the things the sleep tracker will tell you is if when you how many times you got up. Yeah, mm. yeah that's that's relevant, right? And it, I guess it also gathers that's when you stopped sleeping. <laughs> 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 if you get up and you don't go back to bed, oh, yeah. sleep sleep is over. Um, I don't know of anyone. I don't think that I know the Apple watch doesn't do it. I don't think Fitbit's, I don't think anybody tracks uh, temperature, do they? That seems unusual. No, I mean, it's one of those things actually on the finger um, that's, you know, really useful to get because when you get hot or cold, you know, your your body temperature changes first on your extremities. Interesting. So your fingers, toes. You couldn't do it on the wrist for, as well. And you, uh, you can't, you can't do it as well. I think yeah. there's a couple of companies who've tried um, and the data ends up being pretty noisy. You, actually, yeah. it's hard to do uh, heart rate on the wrist. I didn't know this. Yeah. But it's easier to do it on your finger because, what, the, the arteries it's, are right there? It's basically, yeah, you know, you have veins here and arteries here. And these same arteries that have a lot more blood flow, you know, come to your hand where it's super thin. Your skin is super thin. That's right. where, you know, we look at our hands and they're red. So the pulse signal is something like 50 to 100 times stronger on your finger here than your, than your you know, veins mm. on your wrist mm. there. The drawback is there's no readout, there's no watch, there's no time. But I actually don't mind this. It's very subtle, right? It yeah. just looks like a ring. Just a ring. Yeah. And you do have, we yeah. should mention, that. I mean, I'm wearing a matte black one. Uh, but they, you have a variety of different styles, including a, a rose gold, a silver, a shiny black. So there are other choices people can, uh, can get. It's light. It's a little thick because it has to have those sensors in it. <clears throat> That's taken me a little bit of time to get used to. But it... Uh, I, that's because I'm not a ring wearer. I think ring wearers go well. Yeah, it's, it's, no big deal. It's yeah. no big deal. Yeah, it's also got memory in it, right? You it see? does. Yeah. How much memory? Oh, well, we can't say that. <laughs> Secret. <laughs> but uh, we will. We store actually. Um, you know, we can store up to six weeks of data without syncing it to your phone. So that's so. important because it's recording in the ring. Mm -hmm. And then when I get up in the morning, I will open the Aura app, and then it immediately what uses Bluetooth LE to yeah Bluetooth LE to sync, to it, sync all. it over. Yeah. But if you didn't have the phone by your side, or you wanted to put this in airplane mode yep. and turn mm -hmm. off the wireless, it would continue to record for weeks and store that. And then when you finally open your phone up, up and turn it on, it would it would sync it up. You yeah. told us earlier, and I thought this was so fascinating. You've actually you're doing an experiment with uh, African. Yeah, tribesmen, we tribes are. people who don't have cell phones. Exactly, and they're in the wild, sleeping on the ground. So yeah, we're we're actually doing a study with um, University of Toronto, mm. and uh, we got some hunter gatherers that are going to be wearing the rings for six oh, weeks. So cool. That is so yeah. cool. <laughs> I mean, honestly, it's pretty cool because there's not many people left that still sleep in a natural environment mm -hmm. like that, and mm -hmm. yeah. we know there's benefits to sleeping in places that have you know not artificial light, right. and and also when the ground gets cool outside, that helps you sleep as well. 
Yeah, yeah so. that's that's how we would normally sleep. That's yeah. one reason temperature is interesting because your temperature should go down a little bit when you sleep. It's actually right? when melatonin is released, yeah. your core starts to cool itself. Knowing that yeah. you're about to go to sleep. Exactly. Mm -hmm. wow. yeah. So this is the uh, the interface, and I'll show you a couple of things. This is on my iPhone, but you have an Android version as well. Yep. Uh, if I tap the ring in the upper corner, it shows that I'm connected. It shows my battery level. How long? This seems to last a week. It does. It lasts about a week. Yeah. Uh, you know, what I do now, I don't actually take it off very long to charge it. I take it off in the sh when I get in the shower. Uh, every day and I charge it up a little bit each day <laughs> and, and I, it never runs out. This yeah. is the charger here, This is right? the charger. Yeah, we should yeah. show them the charger. Yep, this plugs sure. in via USB. Yep, USB-C. Uh, nice. Yeah, <laughs> super then, light. And then, yeah. the, and then the, so I just keep that on my dresser and when I'm, you know, undressing, when I'm taking off my jammies to get in the shower, I just put the ring on it. And uh, actually, mine's bigger than this one, so it fits the ring. Exactly. They're all and, uh, and then it, uh, it, so I don't ever have to worry about charging it. Uh, you see the airplane uh, mode there as well. Now, let me show you and actually, I'm going to have you explain a few of the things <laughs> that we're seeing here. So each page is a day. Notice, for instance, my readiness uh, on that day was 86. I guess that was Thursday, Friday, or this is, uh, this is Friday, 86. I guess this is Friday, 81. And then my readiness today is 69. Well, oh, what, is, what is this readiness? I am not ready. <laughs> you are not ready. I should go home right now. <laughs> and actually, you know, it's interesting. I did notice that that I feel a little bit not quite as perky as I did yesterday. Well, I mean, look, you didn't get as much sleep, right? Oh, this Your is based outlet. on, so what is yeah. this based on? Sure, so actually you can click the readiness score and we start to give you a bunch of different factors that go into it. So um, we actually end up looking at sort of a rolling basis. Think about it as a two week average. And so we'll look at the previous night, that'll be a factor, but also how have you been over the last you know, two weeks? Um, how much activity are you getting? And other factors um, like your resting heart rate. So. Um, you know, we try, everyone can sort of power through one night of poor sleep, but when you have multiple nights of poor sleep, it starts it really to wear on you a lot you. more. Yeah. So that's why we created this, this readiness score. This is a data yeah. junkie's delight. <laughs> <laughs> and I mean, Boy, talk no, about the kid. quantified self. Yeah. It's all about you too. So it's yeah. a good subject. <laughs> <laughs> Something you care about. So I could see my, <clears throat> just doing sleep, I can yeah. see how long I slept. I could see how efficient my sleep is. What does that mean, my efficiency? I mean, that's like, you know, how long you were in bed or how long you were sleeping versus how long you were in bed. My efficiency is low because I spent a lot of time awake in bed. Yeah. How tranquil I am is how many times I got up. I got up six times. Uh, cause, or not necessarily got up, but I was awake. You were moving times. around, mm -hmm. yeah. But I did get an hour and 24 minutes of REM sleep. That's, that's dreaming, good. right? Yeah, that's dreaming. And that's yeah. pretty good. What do, what do you want? So um, we do know that the stages vary by age, but you know, I would say someone in their 50s, if they're getting about 40 minutes, 45 minutes of deep sleep and an hour, hour and a half of REM, that's pretty solid. That's about where I am right yeah, there. That's Deep solid. sleep is the stuff that cleans your brain, that gets rid of the oxidants and so forth. And, and, and sleep scientists think that REM sleep really helps you consolidate memories exactly and understand okay. things you know yeah. uh, it's where your learning happens right yeah. so sometimes i'll wake up after uh sleeping and, ha and have a solution to a problem i i was thinking about during the day without mm -hmm. even consciously thinking about it that's right that's in the REM. Sleep. you know what happens during REM? they you, your your brain is actually like fast forwarding the whole day so you're actually seeing memories that happen throughout the day at oh, 3x speed Oh, uh, really? So because it's repetition, right? So if you keep playing it, keep playing it, keep playing it, you remember it. So learning happens then. Exactly. Yeah, there's a, there's a good study showing that grades are directly affected for college students by how much they sleep. Uh, ben Smore out of Berkeley just published that. A college yeah. kid should, this would benefit. From. Oh, yeah. Totally. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> latency, which is how long it took me to fall asleep. Yeah, you're and pretty you don't good want, there too. You don't want that to be too long. Yeah. Um, timing is not good, and that's because I stayed up late last night. We yeah, went to you a, went show. a show. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, but but if I go back to previous days, you can. And by the way, you can always get a trend too of all of this. So if I tap that, totally, it'll explain it. This is this is really, um, and I can see other other factors and and the explanation of what it should be. What you know, this is great. This is really useful. What is this graph, sleep stages? What does that mean? Yeah, that's actually showing you sort of when you went into deep, when you went into REM. This is just the trend over time, but you can actually see, you know, that's sort of a normal pattern, getting that deep sleep in the beginning of the night and then having a cycle of REM and getting that deep sleep again. Uh -huh. So um, scientists also know that if we should stage according to certain patterns, you know, going from sort of light to REM to deep. Um, and so, you know, when people are sort of out of those patterns, that, that indicates something could be wrong as well. Uh-huh. 
Yeah. And that's where heart rate is also very useful. Your resting heart rate. The best time to measure your resting heart rate is when it you're is. resting. Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> exactly. So uh, the, lo the lower, the better, obviously. And, and really, elite athletes sometimes will have resting heart rates in the 30s. Yeah, I know. So low. I am obviously not. Dude, <laughs> but that's still really I. good, for, especially for, for an old age. man. Yeah, yeah not yeah. bad. Not, not so old. That's what he's saying not every so time. That's, yeah. if for an old man, you sleep pretty well. Uh, uh, then you're also measuring other things. And I've, I've heard about... Uh, a lot of other things, by the way. Uh, I've heard about some of these other things, like heart rate variability, or HRV. Tell me about that. So HRV is actually a pretty new metric that's starting to be used in a lot of science. Um, mm -hmm. And it, it actually is a measure of your, your autonomic nervous system. Um, so your stress, your flight or fight, you know? Um, so the higher your HRV, so the more relaxed you are. Oh, high is yeah. good in this High case. is good, high oh. is good. So yeah. if you're relaxed, your heart rate will vary. Over It'll time. vary more. If you think about it, you're more fluid, right? So mm -hmm. let's say all of a sudden a cougar jumped out there. You're ready. I'm you're ready. ready to go. Well, and actually I'm, I'm sort of relaxed. So all I got to do is push you away. Mm. Right. Like you get eaten, <laughs> I'm out the door first. Right? But if I was stressed. We, know, was, that, yeah. we know that athletes, if they're in the zone, exactly. they're relaxed. They're in that flow state. Yeah. So uh, this is kind of interesting, and I and I did this on purpose. I wore this for, during my vacation, mm -hmm. and there there was a lot of things to see: you know, sleep deprivation as we flew out, uh, of course, the problem of jet lag, mm -hmm. and in this case, I said, "Well, Hapri, what happened here? <laughs> this is the beginning of my vacation. Why is my heart rate variability so low there? And then it's building back up over time." And you asked me a good question: Did you drink on the trip? <laughs> <laughs> So the so you're saying and I I don't I don't drink it all, very much at all maybe one drink one glass of wine a week mm -hmm. but on this trip I had a gin and tonic or two most evenings yeah, yeah. so that's not a heavy drinker but no more it, than you shows you up here it. actually we're finding some people react you know like worse to certain types of alcohol and they're using HRV to measure it uh, so we maybe had, a wine wouldn't be as bad exactly oh that's very yeah. very interesting so some people were seeing also the timing affects it so if you have like a you know glass of hard liquor or tequila right before bed your heart rate will be jacked, your heart rate variability will be down, versus if you have a beer or wine at four or five, right, you end up, you know, digesting most of it and not affecting your There's sleep. a place to record that, by the way. Each yeah, day, there's a little note. plus button. You can add a note so you can make notes to yourself about what you did that day. And add an activity so if you worked out. This doesn't have a way, because there's no interface, to enter workouts we, on the ring, but you could do it here. You can do it here, and we're starting, you know, as, uh, we actually import all activities now from HealthKit as well. I really like that. So yeah. I do wear an Apple Watch when I work out, so you know about my workouts. Exactly. It's recorded in the Apple Watch. But if I wanted to add, say, I would do 30 minutes of cross-training, you could put it right in here, or or all kinds of badminton. I don't know why. <laughs> every every single fit, there must be somebody out there playing badminton. Badminton, yeah. Every single fitness tracker in the world has badminton. Has badminton. Like, that's a game. Somebody. I think it's the alphabetical order, so when you're like, I you gotta think of the you see A that or near the, the top. From yeah, badminton right. to boxing, it's yeah. all in here. <laughs> uh, this has a great complete list of uh, things uh, that so you can record your activities, you can record your notes. Let's go back to the trends, though, because there's some other things you record that are kind of interesting under the readiness body temperature yeah you know my temperature and yeah. what you're recording here is deviation from 98.6 that's actually it's a deviation from your own baseline um so even oh. different people are are sometimes at 98.4 98 oh, interesting yeah 98 mm -hmm. and you know that yeah yeah. Well, how, how do you get that? You you track it for some period of time and then... Exactly. <laughs> so we start forming a baseline. We, we're actually recording that temperature every single minute throughout mm. the whole night. Um, and so we see that certain people just are, you know, anywhere from 0.2 degrees higher than others. Mm -hmm. And I, I think it's something like the 98.6 was because when they first discovered, like, tracking this over time was done in some town in Germany. <laughs> so and there so, were all that temperature. Exactly. Yeah. And in other parts of the world, people are slightly different. Um, so... If I had a fever, if I were running a fever, I'd see that right You'd here. see, There'd yeah, you'd probably spike. see like a, a spike up to a degree or two. Right. You know, these are pretty small changes. Um, Less than half a degree in most cases. So, yeah. Which you can uh, expect. What does yes. a low temperature mean versus a high temperature? Well, it could be that actually, um, you know, fevers work in both ways. So uh, both, you know, increasing and decreasing. Uh, but it also, okay. you know, we are going to start adding the weather. And correlating oh, even yeah. just the weather change. Well, I was. This yeah. is all. I'm in the Mediterranean. Of course, I'm a little hot. Uh, right. Yeah. <laughs> it was 80 degrees, and I was walking, walking, walking. So you can really see my vacation here. And as soon as I get back, the temperature suddenly. This is the day I got back. Is yeah. now low, Boom. and that might be related to jet lag as well. You think? Yep. 
Yeah, um, I mean, your melatonin release is a little bit off, so your temperature is going to be a little bit changed. Yeah, you told me that. I thought that was fascinating. Melatonin yeah. lowers your temperature. Yeah. Very, very interesting. Kevin Rose introduced me to this a couple of uh, months ago on mm -hmm. the show. He said, you should get, I said, what are you wearing? He says, oh, that's the aura. I said, what's that? <laughs> so, oh, I'll hook you up, man. <laughs> and he did. So thank you. Breed sent me this. Yeah. And I've been wearing it. And What's really interesting is how much there is in this app and how much depth there is. And I know Kevin's working with you to make it easier to, to discover, to see. And we're going to be doing actually a meditation mode with Kevin and Oak. I was yeah. going to ask you, because I, I think really it should tie in very nicely. It does, yeah. To see how meditation impacts all of this. Here's my activity level. I won't show you today. <laughs> <laughs> wow. But yesterday, what I, I, was, what were you I doing? was good. Well, I had my uh, my personal trainer, so he worked Boom, me out. Boom, you did cross, cross training, training nice. for an hour. That was through HealthKit? It pulled it in? or Oh, yeah. actually, that's what it looks so high. It pulled it in from HealthKit, and I recorded oh, it. Okay. So you got, okay, a little bug. Yep. You got duplication. So we'll take one of these. Uh, we'll take one of these. Out. Yeah, well, well, that's something Darn we're it. working on. I was so but. proud of that. <laughs> <laughs> I won't tell anyone. I won't tell anyone. I well, swear. I was at it. I was at it. Where does this number uh, come from then? Now that we, now that we've kind of discussed all of this, this sure. readiness number, which is very high yesterday and uh, not so great today, sixty nine a day. Where does that come from? Um, so we developed it actually internally and based on a bunch of these different factors. So. We started looking at, hey, it's not just one night, right? It's, it's, and we even tell you, like, sleep balance. So last night you didn't get the best, but this is what you've been doing actually over the last two weeks. So despite you having a bad night of sleep last night, right? I'm doing pretty good. You're doing pretty good, right? You had a pretty good week. And so we try to weigh each one of these factors, and we ended up doing this and taking a lot of different people, and actually it correlated really well with how they felt. So um, That's one of the things that's interesting about your company and any company that does this. You're, you're getting a huge amount of data. How many users do you have now? Thousands, right? Thousands, yeah. So oh, even more. Even Well, yeah, tens of thousands. Yeah. yeah. So you're getting a ton of data. Yeah. Or does it, go, does it go back to you? Do you get to... Yes, yeah. We have a... I mean, it's all de-identified, so we it's don't... It's anonymized. Ever, yeah, it's anonymized, yeah. But you get, some, you get some, uh, some chance to kind of analyze the data and get some sense that now you talk to users. Totally, and, yeah. and say, how did you feel that day? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we've even found that there's different patterns with, you know, um, you know, different types of people. So we'll see on the weekends, you know, sort of the people that like to sort of binge drink on the weekends end up staying up super late. Right, and then it'll end up actually affecting their whole week the next week, right? Because mm. all of a sudden you're staying up till let's call it 2 a.m. on Friday night. Right. Then you don't wake up till noon the <laughs> next day, and so by the time you hit Monday, you're still you're. It's almost like you're in a different time zone, right? Mm. Right. It's, so, it's this thing called social jet lag. So there's a ton. <laughs> no, no, I'm serious. Yeah, the there's, there's the kids yeah. are all about that <laughs> right. social yeah. jet lag. I got to tell my daughter. About but uh, that. it ends up actually affecting you know how you perform and does. how you feel. Yeah. That's yeah. what we all did yeah. in college. Social. Yeah, I majored yeah. in social jet lag. <laughs> well, a lot of our users are beyond college and they're still majoring in it. Yeah. So. <laughs> I'm actually pretty good. Yeah. Nighttime uh, heart rate variability. Look how that spikes up and down. There's the max 46. Yeah. Um, I, I'm sure that tells you something. And again, at every time, and this. Anybody who has the aura, this was a great revelation. You could tap anything. Yeah, you can tap anything. And it will explain what it means. So it, it, there is a lot of data in here, and it's really well worth uh, reading all the, all the material. My question is, what, what does someone do with all this data that they get? Yeah. That's the ultimate question. Everybody, that is the you know, ultimate like, question. I got a lot of information. I don't so know what, what do I, what, what how does it help me get better sleep or whatever? Yeah. So actually, um, if you, I don't know if you can share Leo's screen right now. So we start to give you, um, you know, I forget what day this was for you. We start giving you little tips. So right here, it'll say your lowest resting heart rate actually occurred late last night. Um, it looks like you had a late meal. Your metabolism was elevated ah. earlier in the evening. Will actually allow more time for your digestion, so you can improve your readiness. Right, it's still good today, but you might want to take it a little bit easier. Okay, so these are yeah. really useful insights. Yeah, mm -hmm. and we're going to start giving more and more and correlating with other data sources. You know, we're integrating with other APIs, like we said, HealthKit. Um, so, you know, I mean, here's another one, right? Yesterday's activity level, you were pretty active, right? Yeah. Um, so I got double. <laughs> I got double points. You got double points. That's good. Yeah. I think you should yeah. build that into the app. You get double points. It's all placebo is a hell of a drug. Right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, but yeah, we try to give. We're gonna be making this a little bit more active. You know, we're gonna be. Giving well, you'll people... have more insights as as time goes by. Exactly. Right? Yeah. Yeah. You were so. very active yesterday and recovered nicely. Great job. How are you feeling today? Let your body be your guy. This is great. Yeah. I I have to say now it's uh, not inexpensive. Although it's sure. in the same. 
It's less than an Apple Watch. It is less than it's, an Apple Watch. It's in the same price range as a, as a high-end Fitbit. It's $300, right? Yeah, like $299 um, for the two basic colors in the middle, and then the matte black and the rose gold are $399. Oh, I got the uh, fancy one. You I do see. have a fancy mm, one. But we could give out a show special. You want to do that? You want to do that? Yeah. Okay. Let's do it. Uh, Let's why do, not? Why not, right? I let's mean, do 50 bucks off. Let's, what? Yeah. <laughs> okay. 50 that bucks good. off. That's nice of yeah, you. Yeah, we have, you. Uh, we have a, let's make the code TWIT, uh, T-W-I-T, it, okay. when you check out. I didn't mean to turn this into a big ad, but <laughs> uh, I just find, you were complaining I just find about the, the price. Yeah. I found the metrics uh, fascinating. So 50 yeah. bucks off at O-U-R-A. R-I-N-G. R-I-N-G dot com. com. Aura ring dot com. Yeah. And uh, just when you check out, uh, use TWIT, and you'll get some sense I have to say, um, I wear all the, you know, I'm wearing an Apple Watch at the same time, but the data I got back from this was, I think, the most useful. Mm. I even have a sleep tracker built into my bed, which yeah. I'm taking out. <laughs> <laughs> once, once, once Harpreet explained how it worked, it fi it's firing EM, EMF into my brain. Cool. Uh, I think I'll be taking that out tonight. Yeah. <laughs> we'll, we'll send the EMF meter and you can do a test. Uh, we'll put it, I'm yeah. liking this. I think yeah. this is it's easy to wear. Yeah. Uh, you don't have to take it off for anything, only once a week to charge it. Right. And the insights I get, I think, are really fascinating. I and like I, it. I think measuring temperature is a, is a, is a really interesting, unique yeah. attribute. AuraRing.com, O-U-R-A, ring.com. And uh, thank you. Thank Very you. Nice yeah, appreciate you. it. Really Thanks appreciate for having it. us on. I think yeah. you made a yeah, great thanks, Thank you. And appreciate you're working that. actively with Kevin. He's helping you on uh, the app and stuff like that. He's helping us with some UI, UX design, and and you know we will be doing this meditation mode. So that yeah. I'm really I'm excited super, about. Yeah. Super excited. You're a meditator. I am. I am not. And so <laughs> I think I will. You will be good baselines, right? Yeah. Exactly. Because you're an experienced meditator. You're not going to get any benefit from more meditation. <laughs> Whereas I. That's why it's good to be a dissolute drunk because then the improvement is dramatic when you go from you know loser to winner you know what they've uh, shown um when you get into certain deeper states of meditation that your heart rate variability improves and so people are starting to use it as a form of feedback but um oh, we're trying to make it really easy to get that from here versus wearing chest strap or a patch yeah, yeah, yeah. oh yeah so, no yeah I, this is much more so fun. kevin's super excited about that yeah too. i bet he is yeah, yeah. Don't let him take it into that cold bath that he gets into. <laughs> the ice bath? That yeah. cannot be good for it. I it is. It is good for you. Is it? Yeah. It is. Yeah. yeah. Damn, Kevin. <laughs> <laughs> He's too healthy. He really yeah. annoys me. Um, we're going to get to that big screen TV. Mm. Scott's going to give us a little tour in just a second. But first, Jason Howell and Sam Mashkovich, they're doing their gaming series on Know How right now. And I, it's kind of fun. You know, when we first do, did the screensavers 20 years ago, we were, talk, we were all about overclocking. Well, the kids are still doing it. We'll show you how to overclock your gaming rate next. So we can talk a little bit about overclocking because that, that does seem like a really great way to improve the capabilities of your machine yeah. if you have it. Um, and, and you were mentioning to me, and I, I didn't realize this is a thing, a lot of times these machines are being shipped with the idea that you are going to overclock. Like it's, it, in some ways, it's not something that you do to like break a warranty, although I'm sure there are cases where you could break a warranty, but they kind of expect that you're gonna do this at some point. I, I, more companies, especially uh, I've, every manufacturer, I think has a sense that right. you want to push your system. Essentially, a part is gonna ship with a stock speed that is known to be safe across the board, no matter which card comes out of the factory. And there may be some overhead on top of that, and there might not. Now, let's be clear. When we say overclocking, you are always putting your parts at risk when you push them a little further. Even though companies do in some ways sort of uh, nonchalantly say, yeah, you should, you're welcome to give it a shot. You're always doing this at a risk. You could harm your products. Always double and triple check. What we tell you is not the simple bare, it's just the bare minimum. Right. You, need, you need to be careful when you do this. That being said, overclocking in the CPU and GPU space, you can push things just a little bit and to try and get eke a little more juice out. Now, right now on the GPU side of things, we are within Windows 10 because there are a lot of apps that you can get that tie into your GPU no matter who made it. Uh, currently, we're testing with MSI Afterburner, which is a free app, and we're not using an MSI part. But we can go in and we can play with the core voltage, power limit, and the temperature limit 
uh, along with the uh, core clock and the memory clock. And, and you don't need MSI hardware in order to run the software. Correct. It's going to still know how to control these Not things. Not only that, but it's already recognizing that we have a GTX 1080. It knows what driver we have. I can already tell you this driver needs to be updated. <laughs> when, <laughs> Sorry, never, Sam. Never forget to update all of your drivers. But there's so many different ways we can go. Now, when you're overclocking anything, you're ultimately having to sort of try and try again. You don't want to push your, your voltage all that high. Uh, you don't want to push anything all too high. The, the worst that's- The temptation is to do that. Well, it's like, I want maximum power. But generally what's going to happen is you're going to see artifacts or crashes. Uh, uh, yeah. Sometimes it'll just quit out of the, of the game that you're playing. Sometimes it'll hard lock and reboot the system. So your mileage is going to vary, but in general, your safest bet is looking online, depending on your GPU, and finding out what other people have successfully tested. So typing in your model number, typing in the RAM that it came with, uh, the specific manufacturer, whether it ships with its own factory overclock already, because different manufacturers will sometimes apply an overclock, which mm -hmm. will be recognized in the software that you're using uh, when, you're, when you're testing that out. So these are ways where you can just add a little bit of juice to that core clock, to the memory clock, and to the core voltage. Um, and, and this is sort of try it yourself, test and reset, test and reset. Don't push too hard if you are not already enjoying a lot of leeway and a lot of airflow in your in your case. Okay, how do you know that you need to do this? Like you you might you know get a machine and and play a game and things look and sound great. Why like can can they sound even better and look even better well, if you do this? The the biggest thing I would say is that you're going to get more frames per second potentially, and okay. not only that, but more frames per second depending on what you are toggling. Maybe you are just right on the edge of 60 frames a second with the set, settings you have. You know that extra five or six frames a second can make the difference between totally smooth and those little dips at moments, and you don't want those in a high action precision shooter. You want to know that you're getting that constant 60, that perfect set of frame by frame by frame. And so that can make the difference. Hmm. Sometimes, though, you are way above. Your CPU and GPU are kicking butt. You are, especially in, in less demanding games like uh, League of Legends and Counter-Strike, uh, Dota 2 tends to run very well at a lower setting. You, you don't need to necessarily soup up certain games to get all the juice to get to that comfortable 60 frames a second or even 120 frames a second, depending on older, older games. Right. So, but sometimes you might say, oh, I've got a little headroom or, oh, I bought a certain edition that I know is not factory overclocked and I wanna see if my card has those extra, you know, 100 megahertz on the core clock. That's, that's a few frames. And, you know, when you can get a few frames for free without really damaging anything long-term, you should give it a shot. If you have all of your ducks in a row, if you've tested out, don't, again, always be a little cautious with this yeah. stuff. Thank you, Sam. Thank you, Jason. I feel a little overclocked. <laughs> my, aura, my aura ring says I'm relaxed, though. Right? Yeah, that's good. That's good. <laughs> We're in our living room, Scott Wilkinson and I. We, so th I want to tell the story of this. So Hisense uh, showed us the single laser Mm -hmm. version of this 100-inch <coughs> projection TV. We actually had a review with Robert Heron. Right. And then they said, well, we've got the dual laser out. It came out at Cedia a few weeks ago. Yeah. Uh, we'd like Scott to review it, but you don't have the room for something this big. I'm afraid I don't. I don't have a wall on which I can hang a 100-inch <laughs> screen. <laughs> we do, because we're in a studio. Giant you can see, studio. We have, we have plenty of room. In fact, this is the same screen. They didn't even bother to change the screen. They, it's, it's the, the same, same screen, screen right? Exactly, uh-huh. Um, so they said, well, good. We'll, put, we'll bring it to twit will fly scott up so they paid your way up we they want did. to tell people that yep so that he can review this and we thought well great we'll get a review of this on the screensavers now you and robert came in thursday night to calibrate it correct tell me a little bit about your first reaction well the first reaction was uh, we we were very impressed it looked really good in fact what we typically do, Robert and I, and any calibrator, we will do a measurement before we do the calibration. As it comes out of the as factory. As it comes out of the factory. Not in vivid mode. <laughs> yeah, there is a vivid setting, which there, is obviously a showroom setting. Exactly. And, and, and that's going to sell TVs, I can tell you. because It is. It it's is. very bright. But I'm all, and all calibrators are all about accuracy. Yeah. How accurate can the TV reproduce the image as the content creator intended it? So... We, we took measurements ahead of time, and it was surprisingly good. Even out of the box. Even out of the box. Yeah. Even, but, of course, we're inveterate <laughs> tweakers, so we said we can get this a little better. So we got it a little better. And that's what we're watching now is the calibrated mm -hmm. 
display. Exactly. Uh, uh, this, I should mention, um, this is Planet Earth 2, the BBC amazing Planet Earth documentary. Wonderful. Uh, the first one was the like one of the early HD DVDs, and I got it so I could show off my Blu-ray DVD uh, player and my HD TV. Right. I bought this for my UHD TV. Yes, to exactly. Show so this is the show off. Display. I did Although, too. Yeah. It's a great documentary. They really spent some time shooting amazing 4K HDR video. Mm -hmm. So that's what. Just so you know, that's what you're seeing uh, on here right now. Correct. Let me run through the specs on this. And yeah. first of all, let me tell you, this is their uh, um, 100-inch l10e mm -hmm. dual color laser tv from hisense mm -hmm. chinese manufacturer new to this market people may not know the name but they're big in china huge huge it's, it's one of the largest companies in china if not the world um and they're they're big in other parts of the world and they're just now trying to get into the u.s market actually they and tcl another chinese company are both really being aggressive. Mm -hmm. they, they saw what Samsung and LG did. In the, in in the beginning, Korea. people thought that the Korean TVs were junk. Everybody wanted a Sony Japanese or a Japanese. Panasonic Japanese TV. Mm -hmm. The Korean company said, no, no, we want to take over. They did, mm -hmm. right? And Sony, much to the detriment of Sony and Panasonic. Yep. And now the same thing may be happening from may China. May very well be happening. Yes, yes. exactly. This, right. is, this is, I mean, just to my untrained eye, this is really looking good. I was a little less enamored of the single laser it seemed a little washed out kind of projectory to me mm -hmm. this looks almost as good as a direct view tv and even the, in our bright studio and lights. that's what where, where they're marketing this exactly they they want people to think of this as a tv not as a projector because the projector is right in front of the screen right. we didn't have to set up something across the room we didn't have to hang it from the ceiling right it's what they call a short short throw projector it's eight inches off Actually, the wall ultra short throw ultra they call it ultra. ultra mm -hmm. yeah and it's so close that actually they have to have a special screen. You can't just project this off a normal screen. No, exactly right. Because uh, as you know from high school physics, angle of incidence equals angle of reflection normally. So if a, so, it'd be if, great to view up there. Exactly. But, <laughs> <laughs> but if you're looking straight on, so, so how they do had they to do put that? A, they had to do a special coating on this screen called a Fresnel lens, spelled F uh, R E S N E L, but the S is not pronounced. It's French. It's French. Uh, so basically, it takes light coming up at a at he told me a, an, a, almost eighty degrees. So it's almost at a right angle to the you know, and then bounces it and straight then bounces out. it straight out to us. And it's also ambient light rejecting. So the lights that are in the studio here, that light comes in from some other angle, and it gets shunted off in a different direction, not towards the viewer. Now, if you're watching the video, Anthony's shooting this almost 180 degrees off axis. He's shooting it from the side, and I can't see any diminution of brightness or color. No, it you could you could, and that <coughs> makes this a party TV. Yes, exactly. If you had this in a big room, and there were people all over the room, they'd all get roughly equal. Viewing. Precisely right. Precisely right. And that's one of the big selling points here is it's it's for game day, it's for the Academy Awards. If anybody ever still watches those. Um, you know, for, for big event type things that you have in your house that have a video component to it, this is ideal. It's just great. Well, and if you wanted a home theater experience, which means a very big screen, mm -hmm. but you didn't want to spend, you know, 10, 20, 30, <laughs> th well, actually, you do spend 10. You, you spend 10 on this. Yes, <laughs> this we're is, agreeing we to We should to say that. this right up front. It's $10,000. Yeah. But you're not spending $50,000 for a Runco or a Christie. No, that's true. However, I will put this caveat in that uh, even Hisense will acknowledge this is not intended for the home theater enthusiast. Oh, interesting. It's not a video file. It's screen. not a video file because it, because again of the black level and the dynamic range. Well, let's it, talk about that. I, I'm gonna, we're going to run through it. It is a 4K TV. Correct. Is it truly 4K? It is. And the interesting thing is the the chip, the actual DLP chip that's inside there, has four million mirrors on it, uh, four million pixels essentially, and those mirrors can be switched so fast that they, each one can produce two different pixels. <laughs> and so we actually have 8 million pixels on the screen, which is what we need for Ultra HD. That sounds like something like temporal doubling or something. It's exactly what it is. It's called temporal <laughs> multiplexing. That's precisely what it's called. How funny. Those mirrors can switch in 16 microseconds. Wow. And most other imaging technologies are in the millisecond range. Their switching speeds are in the millisecond range. So this is so much faster 
And so they can put 4 million pixels on the screen and then another 4 million pixels on the screen, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, so fast that we don't see it. It just looks like 8 million pixels on the screen. Interesting. And if we look at a, a, a resolution pattern, for example, we can see individual pixels. It's that well resolved. It's that well resolved, yes. But even though it's a 4K HDR, high dynamic range, mm -hmm. the dynamic range is a little bit limited. Oh, quite a bit, quite a bit limited compared to a flat panel. Okay, so yes. my OLED, which is truly HDR mm -hmm. in terms of the range of uh, Dark. between darkest and brightest, mm -hmm. this one does. You're going to lose some detail in the dark. Yes. Yes, and that's why we, for example, we spent some time watching uh, a few scenes from Black Panther, right? Which is a great movie. The one of the opening scenes is super dark. I mean, it's very low light, and you know there were a lot of details lost in that. And we were even in a dark room. This was after we had calibrated. It was like eleven or twelve, right? right. And it was dark here. Um, you know, it's not really intended or best for a true home theater experience. That's but for the TV in the living room. It's amazing. It's amazing. And that's probably why they say it's 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 not an, a video file TV. Correct. It is, but I have to say, and I, I, I mean, I don't know if I'm a video file. I like good video. It looks pretty darn good. It I, does. I don't see uh, that it's somehow missing. And one of the things I don't like about projectors is the blacks tend to be gray. Correct. This These are black. Well, uh, if you looked gray. at it, if you looked at it in in the dark in a dark room, you would in fact see that the black. They're not are, quite are pitch black. No, but this is better than the single laser in that regard, I think. And mm -hmm. I have to say, I'm 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 pretty impressed. Let me run through some of the specs. Sure. Contrast ratio, they say better than thirteen hundred to one. That's pretty good. We actually measured fifteen hundred to one. Is that good? So that's pretty good. I mean, it's you know the, I've seen higher. Oh sure, you, my OLEDs. Once higher. again, OLEDs are in the tens of thousands. Right. Or hundreds of thousands. Right. So, so I shouldn't compare this to my. No, you shouldn't. Yeah. We really shouldn't. But it's got a pretty darn good co contrast ratio for DLP. Again, this this technology, DLP, which is a basically a chip with a bunch of micro mirrors, tiny little mirrors that wiggle back and forth really quick, um, and you get black by angling the mirror so that the light hitting it doesn't go through the lens. Oh, how interesting! That's how that's how that works. But you, it's not perfect. It only, so there's some scattering. There's so you're some gonna scattering. Get you're going to get some, some light. light through the yeah, lens. Yeah. Exactly. That's why they don't get the great black. I have to tell you, though, I'm looking at a dark mountain with a bright sky, mm -hmm. bright clouds, dark valleys, and it, look, it looks gorgeous. It looks like we're almost there. Mm -hmm. I mean, it really is pretty impressive. Yeah. The um, motion, motion looks really good. It is. They are getting a good wide color gamut. They're mm -hmm. getting 90. It said they claim 95% of P3. And we measured 98 that's almost the full P3 almost full P3 color gamut, which is the gamut of commercial cinema. So you're getting movie quality. Yep. Um, at least the color accurate. Is that meaning accuracy? Well, it means it's covering that range of colors. But you've calibrated, we've calibrated so it is it. accurate. Correct. Correct. You didn't. You didn't have to say, well, we, we're not going to be able to show that dark of a red because we can't get there. No, it's all. It's almost all there. It's, yeah, exactly. Now right. HDR10. Uh, I I was told that that's the only kind of HDR you're going to get at a projector at this correct. Price range. Correct. That is that's correct. Normal. That's that's normal. There are no projectors that do any other type. Well, I guess some projectors do HLG, which is the broadcast. Should Should we even say HDR though, given what you've told me? Uh, you know, there are those who would call this. EDR, extended dynamic okay. range. It's so, a little better than a little better the than standard. Days, yeah, than the, old, yeah the, old <laughs> the old days. Yes, that that is correct. But I mean, even when you go to the to the cinema, you go to a Dolby Cinema, they they call or IMAX, they call that extended okay. dynamic range. So I think that that's a more appropriate word for this. Right. I ha I have to say the uh, to me the dual laser has greatly improved color. Mm -hmm. Uh, I'm sure that's true. The detail is really nice. Yep. I feel like, don't you feel like it's a very detailed? Yes, yes, good absolutely. Looking, good looking picture. No question about it. No question. The other thing they do with the laser, which I like, you know, one of the problems with projectors, a lot of projectors, you have to buy a new bulb fairly frequently. Precisely. And it's expensive. It's over $100. Oh, at least $100. And it's the, the worst like thing possible. You got movie night and your bulb dies. That's right. Not only that, but over the life of the bulb, its brightness decreases over time. These don't, this doesn't use bulbs. No. It's lasers. Yes. Two lasers, a red one and a blue one. The red one is just, that's the, the red color that of the red, green, and blue that we need to make a full color image. The blue one, some of the blue light goes directly to the imager to make the blue. 
the rest of it uh, hits on a, a spinning wheel that has yellow phosphor. And the yellow right. phosphor, you can extract green out of yellow, oddly. But that seems to be the most efficient way to do it. So that's where you get your green, well, and I then think the, the blue. color looks good. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And so the you know the the red and the blue measure outside of the where they're supposed to be in their natural state. So you have to kind of rein them in a little but bit. You do that. We did. You fixed yeah. it. Mm -hmm. uh, the other advantage of lasers: twenty five thousand hours. Yes. And that's, with very little fall off in brightness. So it's going to be just as bright ten years from now as it. Again, oh, after 25,000 hours, I, th I think they call that half brightness, right? So, but you probably can't replace the laser. No. So no, that's the can't. life of the TV. Correct. Okay, that's a good thing to keep in mind, but I don't know what 25,000 hours is. Oh, man. That's a long time. Yeah, that's 10 years of, of, of okay. a, with a lot of use. Or eight hours a day, 10 yeah, years. Yeah, yeah, yeah okay. Yeah, so yeah, something like to, that. In other words, you're not going to worry about that. Right. Uh, frame rate is 60 hertz, although they claim... What is XPR? 120 hertz XPR. Well... XPR is a technology from Texas Instruments, which makes the DLP chip. This is that temporal doubling then. Yeah, exactly. Okay. That's exactly. why they say the refresh rate is 16 milliseconds. It's 30 milliseconds XPR. <coughs> Microseconds. 30, microseconds, rather. Yeah, yeah. Not mil That's really fast. That's really so fast. So would this be good for gaming? Yes, it should be very good for gaming. The very little latency. Well, I, I, we didn't measure lag time. You know, it, it, the signal has to go through processing and what have you. And maybe there's a game mode. I don't know. I didn't look okay. for that. That would be a little bit more responsive. If there was a game mode, right. there is a game mode. Okay, okay, so that probably bypasses a lot of the processing. I, we didn't measure the okay. uh, latency or the lag time. Uh, but but certainly DLP is is an ideal technology for gaming. Or action. A, a football game exactly. or an action movie, mm -hmm, too. Mm -hmm. That's exactly really right. good. Mm -hmm. um, Speakers. It also comes with it has phones. speakers, which is kind of crazy. Yeah. But because I think anybody who spends ten thousand dollars on a television is probably going to want to spend some money. In fact, in a second, we're going to show you one of the options, so a soundbar exactly. option that mm -hmm. might be a good choice. Or I would, I mean, if I'm going to spend ten thousand dollars on the TV, I might spend a few thousand dollars on a good sound system to go. With I would it, right? too if I yeah. was you. Yeah. yeah. How, however, again, on the other hand, if you're putting this in your living room or something, you Maybe probably you don't, don't want a bunch of speakers. You know, around your living room. Well, turn up the sound. Does it sound pretty good? Um, the sound is not too bad. Let me just... It's, uh, it's got enough room for a fairly hefty speaker in there. I don't know if we've taken the... We might have connected it to the sound bar. To switch to a different input. Yeah, it's, oh, don't worry, don't okay, worry about mind. it. Um, no, they've what, got like 14 drivers in, in so the front of So it is kind of a sound panel. bar is what it's it is. It's kind of a sound bar, All exactly right. right. And it comes with a wireless subwoofer. They're Harman Kardon speakers, 40 watts of hour, 60 watts, mm -hmm. wi 60 watt wireless... Okay, so the sound actually is pretty good. It's it's not bad. It's, it's also a smart TV, Netflix, YouTube, Prime Video, yep. Voodoo, Pandora, yep. iHeart, Pluto, T Pluto TV, and so forth. Mm -hmm. um, it has uh, echo functions. It has Amazon's Echo. In yep, it, it I does. I can talk to it. Yep. Wow. We didn't try that. We didn't. So have I could say, "Show me the weather." I could say, "TV, turn on." In fact, we did try that a little bit. The remote has a, a microphone. Here, you don't even have to say. You don't even have to say the the a word. You don't. You just press no, the button. Just press the button. Show me the weather. Oh yeah, there's the uh, there's the echo uh, logo. And now and I'm going to. Unfortunately, my planet Earth is going to go away, and I'm going to get the weather. Hey, it's a nice day out there. Yeah, it really. It's some time outside. It's going to be 85 degrees on Monday. <laughs> Holy moly! <laughs> uh, um, Wow, I'm very impressed. Pre-ordering begins November 1st, retail December 1st. You might want to look at this before you buy. I have a feeling, though, if you do, you will say, I'm, I know my reaction and my wife's reaction was, <laughs> when can I take this home? Yep, yep. Uh, the, uh, they It'll have go a, great in your, in your living room. The 100 inch is $9,999 for yep. the dual laser. Yep. As a result, they're reducing the price by $1,000 of the single laser, the one that we you had, had here before. Earlier. Yep. Yep. Mm -hmm. And there is a, get ready for this, a 120 inch version. <laughs> now that's measured diagonally? Yes, correct. So I don't know how much bigger that would be, but it may, you know, maybe a 20% bigger. Yeah. And that is thirteen thousand mm -hmm. uh, dollars, so it's thirty percent more expensive. <laughs> <laughs> now we should also point out that they have an eighty-eight inch version as well for thirty-eight hundred bucks. Oh, that's not bad. So that so eighty-eight inches isn't a whole lot smaller than this. That's no, a big no. screen. That's a pretty big. That's screen. a pretty good choice. Well, I am I I am actually blown away by this, having seen the first one. Yep. And it was good, but not great. Yeah. 
I feel like this is very nice. And for again, for a living, I'll keep my uh, OLED in my keep den. Keep your OLED in your in your den and where we can darken the room and we can have movie night. Right. But boy, I'm I think this would be really great in a in a living room in a great room yep. in a public area. Yep. Maybe for your parties, for your football Definitely games. Definitely for your parties and yeah. football games. This yeah. would be ideal. Boy, I really should. good. I think the detail what I really like is the detail. Look at the fur. Yeah, I really feel like the detail yeah. is very, very good on this. And again, this is true H, the true UHD. Even though you're you're temporarily multiplexing and switching the pixels back and forth, it's better than other projectors that take a 1080p imager and switch those pixels back and forth sl more slowly. Right. Uh, but you're only getting ha half the number of pixels right. that you are with this. So the negatives on this, it's not an not a video file. Correct. Television. Black levels aren't great. Uh, is, but the color accuracy is very Color high. accuracy is fine. Uh, detail seems very, very good. good. Very good. What? Uh, any other negatives that you and Robert saw when you were uh, calibrating this? No, just the, the main one is, uh, well, <laughs> there's... Black a, levels. Black levels. That's that's the main thing for me. Yeah. Now, we did discover... Price, you got to have 10 grand. Yeah, exactly. We did discover a couple of uh, issues in the calibration procedure, which they're going to fix with firmware. Oh, Okay. Very uh, easy. Yeah. You do also, and by the way, I should mention, uh, the $10,000 includes professional installation because the screen needs to be hung properly at exactly square, but, right. you know, it's got to be level gotta be for level. obvious reasons. Mm -hmm. and, and there is a calibration in order to get the sh ultra short throw projector to work properly without too much adjustment for, for uh, you know, pinholing and so forth. They've got to really position it just so, mm -hmm. and so the professional will come in and do that. I Better don't think for he them calibrates to... it, but he no. does install it. No, and sets correct, it. Yeah. correct. That's yeah. exactly. And right. as you said, the cinema mode you said was pretty close. Yeah, yeah, it was surprisingly good. Yeah. I mean, I've seen TVs out of the box that were like, "Oh man, that's yeah. just awful." Even in their movie mode, right? Which uh, you can pick a picture mode, and Vivid is one of those modes, and right. you, you're very impressed by that. Everybody is, yeah. but it's uh, it's not accurate. We have paired this today with something we really can't review because this is not really appropriate room for it, but right. I, I thought we should mention it. Mm -hmm. This is the the new Vizio. I know you're a big fan of Vizio soundbars. I this am. is their SB46514. It's their flagship. Right. And it is an Atmos, a Dolby Atmos, which means the surround sound is not only left and right, but up and down mm -hmm. soundbar for about $1,000. Now, this is the flagship. They also make one that... Well, we'll talk about that. I wanted to point out that this, the uh, model number may seem uh, kind of random and like, what the hell are all those numbers? But they actually make sense. SB for soundbar. Okay. 46, it's 46 inches wide. Okay, it is pretty wide. Notice how much wide. wider it is in the projector. Yeah. Exactly. And 514 refers to five surround channels, <laughs> one speaker, Got and it. four overhead channels. One subwoofer. One and subwoofer, four, sorry, sorry. Four yeah. overheads. The yeah. four, now, the way the four overheads are, you're not going to put a speaker on your ceiling. You could, but you don't have to in this case. <laughs> you're not going to in These, this case. They're, they're, we've got the uh, surrounds, and they have upward-firing speakers on top of Correct. them. Correct, as, as well as at the ends of this soundbar. Soundbar also does. Also has four up, uh, two up-firing, and two up-firing from the surround speakers. That sound goes up to the ceiling, presumably, and, and then bounces, bounces back down, and we hear it as coming from overhead. Now, there are a couple important points to make on something like this. First of all, a 30-foot ceiling right out. There's no, there's and no, with a lot of <laughs> rigging and so yeah, on. This is right out. But you also, so you want a normal height ceiling, and you want one that's Nine. flat, not one that's canted, right? Correct, correct. Cathedral ceilings are not ideal okay. at all. But if you had a flat yeah, and a 9 ceiling. to 12-foot ceiling. Didn't have soundproofing on it. Yes. Uh, you know, those asbestos yes. tiles or yes. something. <laughs> but uh, just a normal, you know, drywall ceiling mm -hmm. that is uh, maybe 9 feet away. That yeah. would work. That would work great. Have you heard these? I, I mean, have. It's phenomenal. It actually, it actually it, bounces it off. It actually works. Wow. Yes. I can't believe it. One of the things about these up-firing speakers that's so interesting is that they're designed so that not much sound. I mean, you'd, you'd think, oh, well, it sounds I'm coming out of the speaker. It. You're going to hear it directly as well it's as very overhead. Well, they, they, they go to great lengths to try and minimize yeah. the amount of direct sound you get yeah. so that all you get is what's overhead. I've never seen a soundbar this wide. Well, this is their big one. Yeah. They also is that have, better? Well, it depends. I mean, you get more separation better, left, right. Certainly right? better stereo separation, yeah. no question. Yeah. It depends on also the size of your TV. 
you know, if you've got a 100-inch screen like this, then it's <laughs> going to be great. It's nearly wide enough. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I need a much wider one. But uh, they also make a 32-inch, which has two up-firing speakers coming uh -huh. out of the sound bar, not four. But uh, so you get, uh, that one's called the 32512. Oh. Right? So that it's still got a subwoofer. It's got, uh, it's 32 inches wide. And it just has the two front Atmos. I prefer four Atmos up-firing speakers or overhead sounds because you- Are they discreet or are they all kind of make, merge to make one? No, they're discreet. Wow. They're discreet. Wow. Uh, the, whenever, when the sound mixer mixes the soundtrack, and they're putting objects overhead, they're basically steering them. So if a helicopter flies go, from <laughs> front left <laughs> to right. rear right, uh, you know, you, you hear that. The sound actually tracks through right. those wow. channels. Wow. Or in this case, a howler monkey. Yes, indeed. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> we had this set up in one of your other rooms with, with a more reasonable ceiling. It still was kind of damped. It had, it had yeah. some soundproofing in it. And we, but we still actually heard, you know, a fair amount of, of overhead activity. And good positioning. Yeah, yeah. Especially in um, uh, Blade Runner 2049, there's a, there's a great shot near the beginning where uh, Kay's shuttle flies right. overhead. Right. And man, I just went, it went. You felt it. Yeah, nice. yeah, absolutely. This has eight uh, drivers in the sound bar. Mm -hmm. And one of the things I do like about this, it has a wireless subwoofer. So you can position that anywhere you want. Mm -hmm. And then the two surrounds come off the sub. Correct. Now, you may be tempted as a result to put the sub back <coughs> behind you along with the two. Which is perfectly fine. Is that okay? Perfectly Doesn't fine. Doesn't matter. Because low frequency sounds are not directional. Right. We, we as humans cannot here and there's some debate about this as to where the threshold is frequency wise but generally speaking we cannot hear where bass sounds are coming from we so use the treble to direction low correct not the low end correct you could also put the subwoofer under the couch <laughs> <laughs> you could you could you know it's flexible. You have a little, little uh, butt shaker thing <laughs> going on. It may move there. your butt. It's a 10 inch subwoofer, goes down to 40 hertz. Mm -hmm. That's you know about all you'd expect a subwoofer of, oh, of a 10 that inch. Size. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, that's only, and that's only down three decibels, which isn't, isn't bad at all. And listening to it, yesterday we spent some time listening to it, and I thought the bass was pretty good. It says it solidly goes down to 20 hertz with CEA 2020 measurements. Yeah, that's a measurement bass. standard. It's yeah. probably down 10 dB by then, so you know you're That's not going to hear a lot of 20 hertz. A lot of the boom, boom. boom. Yeah, right. Okay. But this was not boomy or sometimes subwoofers. Uh, we call them, you know, one note wonders because they all sound like they're one. <laughs> boom, boom, boom. Boom. Yeah, right. Boom. I have those. This didn't. Say, this sounded <laughs> much that better brand. than that. Oh, Absolutely. Good. good. Some definition in there. Mm -hmm. Smart. Oh, they have an app. You have. Yeah, the, uh, got phone? the app right here. So this is called SmartCast mobile app. Uh, and you use it to set it up, too, which is cool. I yep. guess you can use the microphone. We're going to have to unlock Anthony's phone, aren't we? Oh, yeah, no, I think here we go. Oh, there you go. Right. Um, so uh, I don't know if we can see this or... If, it, if it's not sharing, can you see it yet? Oh, yeah, we can. Good. So there it is on the screen. Okay. So we can, if we go into audio, we can see all these different oh, controls. Nice. Bass, treble. Bass, treble, the center volume, which is very mm -hmm. important for dialogue. You know, because very often... I all, talk to a lot of people who wish they could turn up the dialogue. And that, by turning up that center channel... You're doing exactly that. You make it that. much easier to understand the dialogue. Mm -hmm. A lot of times nowadays, they mix that dialogue down a little <coughs> bit much with the big noise going on around yeah, the exactly. to hear. Exactly. Nowadays. Yeah. Now that I'm in my 60s. <laughs> <laughs> now, they do have a surround volume control. And the one thing they don't have that I wish they did was an Atmos volume control uh, so that you could actually It adjust. would be good to set. Now, does this have calibration software in it? Can I use this to calibrate? Because that would be kind of cool. Well, no, not that, I, not that I know no, of. No. So it's really mostly just for configuring it, turning it up and down. That kind yeah, of yeah. And you can, you can choose different EQ settings. I, I chose direct, which is flat. Right. And then cha changed it around a little myself. Or you could choose, you know, movies, right. kind of an automatic right. movie, which gives you more bass, right. <laughs> basically. Um, I, I prefer to sort of have it be direct, and nice. there's also a music EQ as well. Cool. Is this good enough to use for your uh, stereo for music? Uh, I think so. Yeah. Sure, absolutely. Turn I, it up. Let's hear some... Okay. I don't know what we're going to hear. Probably David Attenborough. Probably. Let's Watch see. Watch the hummingbird in its natural environment. Yeah, there he is. Wow, it, actually, we're in a giant room, and it seems to be filling the room pretty well. Yeah. I even feel some bass. Oh, well, isn't that thunder? Mm-hmm. Well, now that's pretty nice. Jungles 
are the richest places on earth. Now that that sounds very roomy. That there should be something. You could turn that. Uh, uh, turn that. They make. Their own if I go to let me go to movie mode and see what happens. This is the again Vizio sound bar, forty six five one four. Water rises from the surface of the. Forty six inches wide. Five point one point four. Correct. The five is the regular speakers left, right, center. And, uh, and left, right, surround. surrounds. Mm -hmm. The one is the sub, and the four is the up firing. Yep. Atmos. There's two on the sound bar and two on the surrounds. Yep. Pretty nice. Pretty nice. Yeah. Nine ninety nine ninety nine. Thousand bucks. Save yourself a penny. <laughs> <laughs> and if you if you if you want to go for the smaller one with the two up firing, that's like five hundred bucks. So, yeah. So they have a forty six uh, inch. Two uh, X up. That's seven ninety nine ninety nine, mm -hmm. and then they have a thirty six inch with two X up four ninety nine. That thirty six inch. I thought these I said are 32. all Yeah, these are all manufacturer suggested retail price. I'm sure. A yeah. lot of times with this stuff. Yeah, you yeah. Get some discounts. And by the way, this also works with Google Assistant. Wow. So if I had this <laughs> and the High Sense, I could have either Google or Echo or both. Or both. <laughs> <laughs> well, we got a pretty nice home theater setup. I'm not going to move. Let's continue to yeah. watch. Planet Earth 2 from the BBC while we answer some questions from the mailbag. Fortunately, there's no way... Oh, darn it. They can get the mailbag in here. <laughs> they did. They managed they somehow. They managed somehow to get that right, damn mailbox right. in here. <laughs> What's this? Ooh. Oh. Is this a new laptop for me? Oh, you shouldn't have. We're going to review this, I take it. Oh, you know, Acer makes... <laughs> <laughs> Acer makes these very nice ultra thins. I had an S7. Ooh, for a look long at time. that! Wow. This is their new uh, Swift 7. You know, I love these with uh, Dolby audio. So we'll review that on a future screensavers. I'm taking that's the idea, right, Anthony? <coughs> Unless you're trying to bribe me. <laughs> I refuse the laptop. I'm taking the TV. <laughs> All right, and we'll take the mail as well. And then just just throw that mail bag out of here. Yeah, get that out of here. Pick, a, pick of an way. email, any email. You're going to answer them both. No, don't take them both. Oh, sorry. You're going to answer them <laughs> oh, both. Oh, okay, all right. But all right. I'll read one of them so all right. I don't have to do all the work. All right. Uh, you start. Email number one is in your hands. Okay, friend. all right. Here we go. Uh, Gary writes, I am in the market for a new smart TV in or around the 60-inch range. Oh, how about this. a 100-incher? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not, look, inch. I'm not looking for the best at any price, but more best value for the money. Okay. What do you recommend? Well, my first recommendation... I know what you're going to say. Let me see. Vizio? Yep. Yep. <laughs> and the P-Series? P-Series, precisely. P-Series is my pick for uh, value-oriented TV. P used to be their top-of-the-line performance model, right? Or no? Well, it is. Well, actually, the very top of the line used to be called the reference. Yeah. But they don't do that anymore. They don't do that anymore. They now have actually the PQ, which the Q stands for quantum dots. Uh -huh. And that that TV is awesome. Yeah. It's really awesome. A lot more expensive? Uh, quite a bit more, yes. The P65, the regular P65, 65 yeah. inch, yeah. 1200 bucks. Well, that's a good price. Which is a really great price. The PQ65, 2200 bucks. <laughs> So, now, my mom, I was on the phone with my mom a couple of days ago. She said, honey, I need a new TV. Mm -hmm. What do you recommend? Which, from when I hear that from my mom, what it means is, what are you going to send me? <laughs> so, <laughs> now, the last TV I got her, she really liked. It was a TCL. That's one of those Chinese manufacturers mm -hmm. we're talking about. Mm -hmm. And she really liked it because it had Roku built in. Yes. One of the, what, there are a couple of new models, uh, lines that have Roku built in. Yes. So I got her, and I couldn't believe it. I went on Amazon. I thought, well, let me see. The, the TCL with Roku, 55 inches, 350 bucks. Unbelievable, huh? Now, is that a crappy TV? I don't think so. I don't think so. Now, it, it you got her the S series. Yeah. I'm, I would normally recommend... It's not the top of the line. It's obviously. not the top of the line. I would recommend the R series, or what they actually call the 6 series, which is their top of the line. Uh, but the 65 inch is a thousand bucks. The 55 inch is 650. So it's more than you you yeah, spent yeah. on on your mom's TV. But the six series has what we call fold full array local dimming. You, the S series that you got has full array that is LEDs behind. Which is the better screen, than edge. Which is better than edge lit. But the R series or the six series uh, includes what's called local dimming. Yeah. So and the the Vizio P series also does this, uh, where the 
LEDs behind the screen are divided into smaller zones. And the zones behind a dark part of the image would get darker. And the zones behind a brighter part of the image would get brighter. Gives you better perceived contrast. Yeah. And generally, it's, it's the best way to go with LCD TVs, no question about Very it. Very nice. Um, uh, both of them also, the, T, the TCL 6 series and the Dolby, uh, or sorry, the uh, Vizio P series, both do Dolby Vision HDR as well as HDR 10. So that's a big, uh, a big uh, advantage there. Uh, Vizio also has Chromecast built in. He wanted a smart TV, and there were a there are a bunch of apps on both these yeah, TVs. Yeah. The TCL. I think the Roku though is really TCL cool. has Roku built I in. I think and Roku I love is, that. is the cream of the crop yep, in terms yep, of smart stuff. Yep, uh, yep. And having it built in, great for mom. She's eighty five because mm -hmm. she doesn't have three remotes. She right. has one remote. Right. Right. And, Much easier for her. And I it, I totally agree with you on that. Uh, there's the TCL six series uh, is fabulous. A little less than the Vizio. Either one, you couldn't go wrong. Very good. I have email bag question number number two. two. Mm. Number two. <laughs> Long time fan since the ZD TV days. I have. I've never heard of this. The Mohu Leaf TV antenna mm -hmm. for his over the air. For his TV. over the air, exactly. Over right. the air is a great deal. If you are in the, anywhere, <coughs> we can't get over the air here. We're too far out of the city. Mm. But if you're somewhere where you can get, uh, uh, you know, uh, all the major networks over the air, that's easily the best deal in television. So it's worth getting because right, it's TV. free yeah. and it's really good quality. Is the Mohu Leaf a good TV? Excellent, in? excellent, okay. definitely the one I would recommend. Oh, good. So he got he, he got it right off. He's the bat. got a good antenna now. He needs a DVR. Mm -hmm. I'm in the market for an over-the-air OTA DVR that allows me to extract the video files of my recordings so I can view them on different devices and back them up. Mm -hmm. Now, a TiVo won't let you extract it. There's TiVo to go, but he wants to actually have the, the bits. And there really are, there, there's only one that I actually know of that'll do that. Let me guess. The, the Silicon Dust Home Run. Do you know about no, that? No, I, I know about it, but I didn't I think bet of that you, you one. I you can do that. I have to go look into Cause, that. Because I think the idea of the home run is it connects to a computer. Right, right. right. When you record on the computer. Then you can. If you didn't have access to the bits, who does? Yeah, right, right. Right. What, no, you what, know what were you going to say? I was going to say that the TiVo Bolt OTA. Yeah, so that's the idea of the TiVo. They have that TiVo to go thing, right? Well, right. But but according to we'll the TiVo website, the they actually let you have the bits. Oh, nice. Yeah. It's the only one I could find. Now, the silicon dust, I forgot to think about the that. The HD home run is amazing. I'm going to go look for that and yeah. see what that whether or not that will let you o do that. The other OTA uh, DVR I know of is Channel Master, but mm -hmm. I don't think they it don't. lets you access. They don't. Yeah. That's, I know that for sure. So maybe the Bolt. Maybe the TV. Bolt OTA. They have a Bolt OTA, and I right. think they have a Bolt cable. Right. Right. So you want the OTA version. I have the version. Bolt cable, and I love it. Right. Love four, it. four tuners, 150 hours of storage, also does streaming content. Voice control with Amazon Alexa, 250 bucks. All right. Nice. Now, the other two I wanted to mention quickly was uh, the Amazon Fire TV Recast. This will not let you offload the bits, but it will let you stream to your other devices. Uh, this is one thing he wanted. He said, I want to view them on different devices right. and back them up. Well, back them up, you can't do except maybe with the TiVo or maybe with Silicon Dust. But um, the Amazon Fire TV Recast... Uh, will let you stream anything that's either live or recorded to your phone or your tablet or whatever. This is a category of question, and we get these all the time, that I feel like we're not going to get in years to come. So much of TV now is about streaming. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it reminds me of my old friend uh, that worked with me at the radio station in the 80s who had recorded every episode of Cheers yes. on a VHS yes. tape. Yes. <laughs> he had a closet full of VHS I tapes. I did the same thing with a number of shows. And then I look on Netflix, and you can watch every episode of Cheers mm -hmm. streamed at your convenience yep. to any device that yep. can handle Netflix, which is every, every device. Every device, yeah. It kind of makes that obsolete. I agree. And I have a feeling that DVRing stuff is going to become less and less important as I agree. on demand becomes more and more prevalent. I, I agree completely. Yeah. That's absolutely true. But here's my question for you. What about over the air? That, then this is what he wants. He wants over the air DVR. Is, is are, are we going to, are TV stations going to still broadcast over the air? I guess they will. They will because we're just about, we're on the cusp of seeing ATSC 3.0, which is the next generation of broadcast, over the air broadcast. ATSC is the technology over the air uses. ATSC stands for Advanced Television Systems Committee or something okay. like that. And they're the ones that 
establish the standards for broadcast. Right. And what so, does three bring us that we don't have today? Oh uh, well, 4K for one thing. Oh, uh, and, and over high the dynamic air 4K, range. Yeah, HDR. Yep. Uh, right now, the best HD you can get is over the air. Right? It's the least well, compressed well, compared to say satellite or uh, cable. Uh, correct. In terms of broadcast, that's yeah. absolutely true. Uh, Blu-ray is the best you the can. The best is a, a physical is a physical media. media. Yeah. But in terms of broadcast or getting it live or something, then yes, OTA. It's a great deal. It's free. It's free. Um, wow. So we're going to get over the air 4K HDR. Do you think that? Yeah, oh yeah, that's going to that people will upgrade. Mm -hmm, I do. Wow. We're going to start seeing some trials. We've already seen some trials, and now the next step is to deploy it in the major markets. Normally, this is a chicken and the egg thing. I mean, it took mm -hmm. a long while to get to HD because nobody had HD TVs. Right. But this is a little different today because every TV sold today practically is a 4K HDR. Correct. So networks and local television stations are much more assured of customers that want 4K. Than they were with HD when that first came out. Right. That That's was exactly real, right. That was taking a chance. The big problem, again, chicken and egg problem, is that uh, those TVs, the first one, well, the ones you can buy now don't have an ATSC 3.0 tuner because <laughs> there's, <Whoops. laughs> you know, there's no ATSC 3.0 tuner available yeah. yet, you know, but uh, so... Maybe that was Vizio's idea when they stopped when selling they, tuners in yeah. their TVs. Although, as we as we talked about earlier today, uh, Vizio has put their tuners back. Yeah. Demand. Because people really wanted Demand. it. So, maybe there'll be an upgradable uh, tuner, perhaps? Or yes, or like in the early days of HD, there were separate there were boxes, boxes yeah. for tuners, and yeah. those are gone now. Right. And I think the same thing will happen with 4K. Uh, the other company I wanted to mention was Tableau. Have you ever heard of Never Tableau? Never heard of them, no. They have a number of... Um, uh, DVRs? DV well, actually, they're sort of DVRs. You supply your own storage. <laughs> you That's fine. You, any, any, hard drives are cheap. Any USB hard drive you want. Everybody's got a bunch of hard drives lying around. Yep, exactly. And so it's a box, but it doesn't have any storage. Right. You plug in a drive to it. Yep. Well, that means you own the bits, I guess. That's right. Then, then I, don't, I, did, I didn't have time to research whether or not they encrypt it, for That's example. The with That's TVOs. the problem. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. Um, so here we see on the screen a number of, of the different... Uh, T-A-B-L-O. Tableau. Tableau, yes. And one of them does come with 64 gigs of, of memory on it. Yeah, but, you know, I'd almost not buy their storage. and mm -hmm. buy, bring, bring your own storage. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Scott Wilkinson, you're the awesomest. Uh, if you hadn't heard, and we talked about it on the radio show, Scott's no longer at the AVS Forum. Sadly not. It is part of the entire the shrinking uh, in general mm -hmm. of uh, online media because mm -hmm. of lack of revenue, sad mm -hmm. to say. Mm -hmm. And it breaks my heart, but we're going to have you up as much as we can. Of course, you join me every week on the radio show. And maybe, maybe just someday that Home Theater Geeks podcast. You know, I get so many requests for <laughs> that. Awesome. Yeah. And uh, we'll I'm, help you in any way we can. I'm really looking forward to now that I have more time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, really restarting it again, nice. and I'll look forward to uh, speaking with you about that okay. <laughs> at some length. Well, thanks to Hisense for lending us this TV and for paying your way up here. Oh, that's it was really tremendous. great to have you. We always love seeing you. I know you got to get back, so we're going to wrap this show up. We do the new screensavers uh, Saturday afternoons after the radio show about uh, 3 p.m. Pacific. That'd be 6 p.m. Eastern, 2200 UTC. If you want to stop by and watch us, you can go to twit.tv slash live. You can also uh, get on-demand versions of this show and everything we do at the website, twit.tv slash NSS for the new screen savers, twit.tv slash NSS. Uh, you can also subscribe to our newsletter, twit.tv slash newsletter. That'll give you a heads up on what's coming in the, uh, in the week ahead. Let's see what else. Uh, subscribe to the show. That way you'll get a copy of the show in your inbox on a regular basis the minute it's available. Um, thank you so much for watching. Thank you, Scott, for coming. And we'll see you next time on the new Screen Savers. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.